Well, so, what do we have so far? We have Rudolf Steiner in the 20th century being the John the Baptist figure, the voice crying in the wilderness of scientific materialism, and the announcer of the second coming of Christ. And then after that, we have the collapse of the anthroposophical society. And still today, people are dishonest about it. Now, are they dishonest because they're liars? I don't think so. A lot of the people in the leadership are brilliant, absolutely brilliant-minded people. They're just not careful thinkers. Well, what do I mean by a careful thinker? Well, Rudolf Steiner thought that in order to bring alive the mysteries in the present, we had to include in our processes and approach the ideals of natural science. He talked about this again and again and again and again. It's the whole basis of his first three books on the mystery of thinking. How do you be a natural scientist of your own mind? The subtitle for the philosophy is of freedom is some results of introspection following the methods of natural science. So, are they talking about natural science and the study of the mind and being a scientist of the mind, of your own mind, in Dornoch or in the Councils of America? Nope, they're not. My goodness. Did they not see the memo? Rudolf Steiner left great big pieces of the memo all around for people to deal with. Now, how do people get that way? Well, one of the names I give myself, which is probably the most true of all, is social philosopher and occasional fool. And what do I mean by social philosopher? Well, I've used the new mysteries of thinking to get into the social, to think about the social. You can read all kinds of stuff about the social that you won't get from Dornock or the Councils in America. Very important stuff. We'll get to that later. But here I just want to talk about uh, an observation of the Anthroposophical Society. Now, a human organization like the Anthroposophical Society has a culture. It creates an internal culture. It creates language conventions, ways it typically talks about things, certain ideas which it has and among those ideas will be things that are things that we call sacred cows things that people really don't want to think about or examine very carefully because hmm, there's something about them that's a little bit troubling and the troubling part is the fact that people actually know in their heart of hearts and in their conscience that maybe they aren't being as good an anthroposophist as they might be, and they don't want to really think about what the consequences of that are. So you have an anthroposophical culture, and this, and when you enter into this anthroposophical culture as a new member, you assume that it's cool, that it's the best that it could be, that it's just wonderful. Well, oops, that's maybe not so much true because the Anthroposophical Society is a human organization. And I've already demonstrated in the prior two talks a couple of things that are not talked about from Dornock, and now I'm going to do another one. And I'll do more over the course of time, but as far as this first group of little talks, which I'm going to release simultaneously, uh, I only wanted to go so far. So let's talk about anthroposophical culture. Well, it's a culture in which the principles of science and the scientific examination of the mind have been forgotten. And so for all the good and brilliant thinking that, that comes to us from these individuals within the society, very, very few manifest the metamorphosis of thinking that Steiner attained, practiced, and taught. Now, as Joel went saying he did it, you betcha. 
I have a little booklet called Living Thinking in Action, which you can read all about it that talks about that problem. And my book, The Way of the Fool, which is about sort of reuniting the shepherds and the king stream with each other. Uh, the two essays in Living Thinking in Action are in that book. In my book, American Anthroposophy, which is an attempt to kind of redirect the Anthroposophical Society and Movement, those two essays are in there also. So you can pick up just about anything that I write that's big and significant and important. Gosh, everything I write is important. People should be dripping all over with enthusiasm to read my books. Of course they aren't. Anyway, anthroposophical culture has its way and it has its ideas and it's half asleep. And you can explain the half-asleepness, how it came into existence over the course of time. But when they dropped natural science as an important component of what it means to be an anthroposophist, and when you don't get Dornock telling, talking about Owen Barfield, or they don't talk about the Gertian science, and when people read more Steiner than they really need to read, when there's all this other great stuff to read, like George Adams and... Rudolf Hauschka's The Nature of Substance and on and on and on and on and on all kinds of stuff to read that helps you be a scientist in your orientation to the world instead of a true believer in what has to be unfortunately called Steinerism which is not anthroposophy. That culture then becomes the opponent of real anthroposophy and when real anthroposophists come toward that culture and try to participate in that culture, anthroposoph modern anthroposophical, well, modern anthroposophical society culture, we should say, they get pushed to the side. So you don't have Josiah Ben Aaron in Dornock. You don't have George Cullivan in Dornock. You don't have Oren Barfield in Dornock. You don't even have Dennis Klocek from America in the Councils on America. And he's one of the leading lights in America. And the reason is, is because people who practice anthroposophy with a scientific impulse don't easily mingle with those people who don't. Okay? Think about it. There's more to anthroposophy than what comes out of Dornock and the Councils of America. A great deal more, and not only is it a more, it's the essential more. It's the missing part. It's the what we got to have if... It is our hope and wish that anthroposophy become part of the culture of the world and contribute to the future of humanity. We're in a war now. And the war goes on inside us. And it has to do with how lazy we let ourselves be. And how phlegmatic we are in our soul life. And how much we don't pay attention to all the warnings that Steiner gave us about the things that are going to happen. On my website, there's a lecture, not by me, but by somebody else, that establishes very clearly that Rudolf Steiner said before he died that the Christmas conference had failed. And what do we get out of Dornock and the councils in America? The magic of the Christmas conference. It's magical thinking. Now, we could be scientists and we could have a lively debate, but we don't. People say critical things like me. They get ignored. They get badmouthed. Well, that's anth anth the anthroposophical society culture that does that. It pushes the truth away because the truth actually makes you wake up, not be asleep.